This demonstration is attaching a Windows 2016 server to an ME4 fiber channel array. Before we begin, it is important to understand the layout. This ME4 has four fiber channel ports on each controller. The fiber channel ports are cabled redundantly to two different fiber channel switches. The ME4024 is connected to ports 20 through 23 on both switches. Ports 0 and 2 on both controllers are connected to the first fabric, while ports 1 and 3 are connected to the second fabric. The server has a dual-ported fiber channel HPA with one port connecting to each switch. I recommend documenting which ports each device is plugged into. It makes it easier to identify the correct worldwide names when zoning. You can use the first byte to identify what controller port is logged into each switch port. Starting with controller A port 0, the first byte of the worldwide name is 20, port 1 is 21, port 2 is 22, and port 3 is 23. Controller B continues with 24 through 27. If this had been a dual protocol system with both fiber channel and iSCSI ports, there would only be two fiber channel ports in each fabric, not four. To install MPIO, open Server Manager, then click Add Roles and Features. Click Next, Next, Next until you get to Features. Scroll down to Multipath I.O., select it, click Next, click Install. Click Close and then Reboot the Server. After the host and array are cabled to the switches, the next step is zoning. Dell EMC supports single initiator, multiple target zoning. This means each HBA should be in its own zone with all the storage targets connected to that switch. No other HBAs or initiators should be in the zone. Log into the first switch, click Configure, then Zone Admin. Click Create New Alias, enter a name, and click OK. Expand Ports and Attach Devices. Scroll down to the port number that the first controller port is plugged into. As previously discussed, the array is connected to ports 20 through 23 on both of these switches. Expand out the worldwide name to see the worldwide port name, which is underneath the worldwide node name. Highlight the worldwide port name and then the right arrow to move the worldwide name over. We can confirm this is port 0 on controller A due to the fact that the worldwide name starts with 20. I recommend updating your worksheet with the worldwide names for the devices. It will be especially important for the server's worldwide name when mapping volumes. Right click the worldwide port name, click copy, then paste the worldwide name into your worksheet. We will create an alias for the next controller port that is connected to switch port 21. We can verify it is controller B port 0 by the worldwide name starting with 24. We will continue creating aliases for the other ports connected to this switch. After you have created aliases for each of the array's front end ports, you will create aliases for the server HBAs. In our case, each server has one connection to each switch. After all the server aliases have been created, click on New Zone. Enter a name for the zone. It is typically descriptive of what is in the zone. In this case, we will use a server name and a array name, followed by underscore zone. Expand out aliases, locate one of the newly created server aliases, 
and all the aliases for the storage array. Highlight all of them or one at a time and click the right arrow. Repeat creating a zone for each server HBA. Next, click on Zone Config tab. Expand out zones. Finding newly created zones, highlight them and click the right arrow. Click on Save Config. Click on Yes. Wait for the changes to be completed. Then click on Enable Config. Click on OK. Click on Yes. After it is completed, you can close the zoning wizard. Repeat the zoning for the second switch. After the zoning is complete on both switches, the next step is running the host setup wizard. Log in to the ME storage manager. On the home page, Click on Action, then Host Setup. Confirm you've met all the prerequisites and click Next. Type a name for the host name. Select the correct initiators for that host. If you have zoned multiple hosts at the same time, you will need to identify the correct worldwide names for each host. Use your worksheet to confirm which worldwide names go to each host. It is optional but recommended to update the nickname to something meaningful. Click Next to continue. If this is going to be part of a cluster, you can either create a new host group or add to an existing one. This will be a standalone server, so I'm selecting Do Not Group This Host. Click Next to continue. By default, two 100 gig volumes will be created, one in each pool. I recommend renaming the volume to include the server's name. You can edit the size, change pool ownership, add and remove the number of volumes to create. When you have the volumes how you want them, click Next. Notice the name didn't change. You actually have to click outside of the box for the changes to take effect. 
So click Previous and click into another box, then click Next. You can see the volume name changed this time. Click Configure Host. Click Yes or No depending if you have another host ready to configure. I will go ahead and configure the other host now. Again, I will only create one volume for this host, but this time I will assign it to the other pool to balance the load between the controllers. Next, we'll be configuring MPIO for multipathing. Open MPIO from the Start menu. Click on the Discover Multipaths tab. Select Dell EMC ME4, then click the Add button. Click Yes to reboot. Open Disk Manager. Right-click the new disk and bring it online. Right-click it again and choose Initialize Disk. Right-click on the unallocated space and follow the wizard to format the volume.